Hello and welcome. It's the art and science of designing buildings and other structures, structures that live for years, decades, sometimes even centuries. Architecture is all around us and with the rapid urbanization of our small towns and cities, the demand for it is only growing. So the chances of making it big in this field are, of course, rapidly increasing with each passing year as sustainability now becomes the buzzword. Kriti Mathur finds out what it takes to design our homes and cities. When you look around you and marvel at the skyscrapers, high-rises, houses, office spaces or neighbourhoods and go back a few centuries and admire historical monuments that defy age and time, it is important to remember that all that started from all this. An architect's notepad. Rapid urbanisation has transformed the face of our cities and small towns over the last few years. And along with real estate, the demand for architects has also been on the rise. The country has close to 50,000 registered architects, but requires at least 5 lakh, according to the Council of Architecture. A gap that's waiting to be filled. So if you think design is your strength, here's how to go about it. To get through an architecture institute, one needs to take an entrance exam. Most architecture courses in the country are 5 years long including a semester where students are encouraged to intern with an architecture firm. While getting into a top architecture school is step one, the going gets tougher once you are in. The Guinness Book of World Records says the most difficult education to have is architecture. It is more difficult than medicine. And um, I think the easiest part of the difficulty is the hard work. The hardest part is emotional. 80% design is emotional. See, you work all night, you work two nights, you bring your project, you pin it up, you're basically laying yourself bare and, you know, your jury member comes, look at it for one minute and uh, says a critical comment. Your mind is already switched off. You don't even know whether this meant comment was meant as a dialogue or as a criticism in a negation. And, you know, you work 200 hours on a, on a drawing and the person says your basis of making the drawing is wrong and the student has to go back and start the drawing again. It takes a lot of emotional maturity. The job of an architect involves design, striking the right balance between aesthetics and practicality, and ensuring the environmental feasibility of a project. They work closely with their client from start to finish of a project to balance the client's ideas, budget and time frame with a host of other construction professionals, including surveyors and engineers. Though a background in science does definitely help, good mathematical skills are a must in this profession. The assumption is that you, you have a very good hand, creative hand, uh, that would help. My belief is what really helps is that you have the willingness to be articulate. I, I have a lot of students who come and say, uh, but I'm not very good with maths. Will I still be able to make a good architect? And I'm sure, not a problem. Architecture is therefore a mix of sciences and the humanities. Knowledge about history, anthropology and the environment are an asset to have in this profession, along with the technical skills. So if you're up for a challenge and love designing, look no further and welcome yourself into the world of architecture. In New Delhi with Mohammad Arif, Kriti Mathur for NDTV. And where are tomorrow's architects getting their inspiration from? What are the expectations of architecture students? Let's find out. We're with some architecture students at Sushant School of Architecture. Some of them are fourth years and some of them are first years. And we're just going to get an idea of why they took architecture and from the fourth years, what, what they feel now that they've almost completed their degree and what they're doing for their thesis. They're doing some pretty crazy stuff and you must hear about that. So I'll start with you. Why did you... How's it going, your first year? How do you, why did you choose architecture? And is it matching up to your expectations? Um, I've been studying architecture for the past 10 months almost. And uh, it's been tough. I mean, I didn't realize I was doing medical before. I started with medical in 11th. And I didn't realize it would be that tough. As t I mean, it's tougher than medical, it's tougher than anything I've, I could ever imagine to be, it to be. And uh, honestly, I've always j just been fascinated by the built environment. And uh, I can't really give you that much of an idea because I've never thought about that much. 
the kind of experience you get during the whole course is is a mixture of all kinds of things from personality development to fine arts to design to the actual foundation of the whole uh, buildings and everything so that is something which is very interesting you guys are in fourth year what sort of why do you think it's so tough for students who are studying in class 12 or 11 who want to get into architecture what would you say to them it's more of a matter of choice so if you have chosen architecture for yourself you need to be prepared it's going to be tough and uh, it's more or less it's the daily work that the daily submission that that's actually pressing but i think if it's your passion then there's nothing beyond it you can do it what i feel is that you should like basically concentrate on your 12th boards and then get to architecture like you have that uh, gap like the two month gap so you should like probably take coaching like we guys did uh, for architecture i mean it's a prerequisite to have a good hand but like i still feel that you can still do that two month gap you have in between you can probably work it out in that gap so you guys are in fourth year what are you doing for your thesis what are you designing for my thesis i'm designing the delhi secretariat um because um, the present secretariat is projects an image of insulation of grandeur of being away from the people it's like a ruler and the ruled um the place where i've chosen to build it is the plot in front of ramlila maidan the idea is that those in power are accountable so directly trying to show that through design uh for my thesis i'm designing a fashion center but the main aim of doing it is to propagate fashion as a form of art and this is done in a manner so that it kind of infuses an absolutely new outlook to a core industrial power plant as a design center for my thesis i'm doing a crematorium okay so that you just raise an eyebrow okay so the fact that there is this unconscious rejection to such spaces so i'm trying to deal architecture like uh, take architecture as a tool and like try working out these crematoriums as a whole system and like i'm trying to work it within the city not outside the city because these spaces are always seen outside the city next to a river but what i'm trying to do is that how does the city like react to such spaces and like try to work out a system where people can like the areas of remembrance right that's what students think but now for a reality check what do top employers look for are they in line with the skills developed by the students how do employers decide who makes the cut uh, an architect must bring uh, creativity in a balanced time frame to the table uh, the industry is now looking for architects who can contribute in terms of uh, see our cities are in any case bursting at their seams uh, new structures must not be eyesores uh new properties must blend in with their environments yet be iconic so the industry is looking for that format of design where we blend with the atmosphere and we also have uh, a certain amount of iconic design things to look forward to we're trying to create downtowns out of concrete messes right and our expert usha albakak with us thanks very much ma'am for joining us the Thank demand you. of course for architects you seeing this age that we are living in you know you, you can't drive anywhere in this country yes. now and not see these buildings come up there's so much construction there's just so much of it all around us so i would imagine that there would be a demand also that's it's that's it's increasing right. and it's certainly one country where it is increasing mm. in the west this is not so much but mm. here in developing countries like ours china mm. Mm. there is a huge demand mm. yes necessarily so mm. Mm. And I just want to talk a bit, ma'am, about uh, sustainability. Also, you know, when you read up now yes. about uh, uh, architecture, the one thing that there seems mm. to be the buzzword, mm. not really in fashion or in, in in vogue, but you know, something that people are taking very seriously and focusing on oh, is yes. sustainability. Oh yes, they're looking at today this whole concept of green buildings, mm. Mm. and in any case, architects have to build within an environment. Mm. Um, you don't just put a structure in the middle mm. of anywhere mm. irrespective of what how beautiful it may be mm. uh unlike the taj mahal which right. could just come right. up there mm. and and look stunning mm. irrespective and of all the years that have gone by mm. but today you have to be um, conscious of the environment mm. and i think architects much more so mm. because they they work in sustainability they're right. looking at mm. how do you maximize mm. there's only limited amount of light and air and and uh, mm. cool you know mm. or heat that you can get and how can you maximize that so let's get started right away with queries coming in tanya has a question go ahead tanya the question i'd like to ask is uh, is combining a management degree with architecture a good idea yes tanya uh, i would uh, say that it really depends on what you want to do hmm. um if you want to stay in the field of architecture hmm. then i think it might be better for you to either start working 
or specialize in a particular area of architecture, whether it's urban design, whether it's landscape, whether it's restoration, conservation, and there are many, many specializations that you can take up. Mm. Um, if you want to actually get a management degree in line or in link with your architecture, mm. I would think uh, an MBA in construction management may be mm. an ideal, mm. because that's really an area where a lot of students may want to move on to, mm. where they then handle their own practice, mm. move into the development part where you're actually working with uh, civil engineers and mm. contractors and developing, mm. uh, you know, mm. taking on the whole uh, kind of right. complex that mm. you set up. If, on the other hand, you want to move out of architecture and into mm. something uh, like management, right. then, uh, it, then it just becomes like a base degree that you right. use to do, uh, and anything then you can really you can would, go on to right. anything else. And the other thing I'll say is that sometimes um, students want to move on to management mm. because they feel architecture doesn't give them the kind of remuneration that management will. And that's okay. the primary reason why many is want to Is that correct it. though? Yes, because when you start out in architecture, the salaries are not great. I see. Uh, they're actually quite low. Right. And plus the work is also, you're just doing very mundane mm. line drawing work mm. uh, because you're doing, you're learning on the right. job. And somebody else may design okay. the building and you right. just got to carry out all right. the, uh, the, the drawings for them. But it's really a gestation does, period. Right. And if you're, interested in the field right, and right, your heart is right, there absolutely right i would say then just stay, stay the, the course, course because right. you're going to actually um, do very well in the future right. and you will certainly uh, get a better remuneration as you go up right, the right. absolutely that's of course uh, like we've been discussing in yes. most uh, fields and as, as one architect one the student told me she said you know the best uh, thing i can say for my cv which many can't is when i can tell people if you look at that building that's that, something yes. i was involved I in or i've designed that, right. she says how many others can put their cvs right. out right. on uh, on for everybody to that view that would be quite yes. priceless actually yes, well absolutely. let's move on to a question from daksh go ahead daksh Hi, my name is Daksh and I want to ask this question that whether we should gain uh, experience before going for our postgraduate courses and how do we decide which field to specialize in for the postgrad because we haven't specialized in anything in our undergraduate course. Right, so he seems a bit confused, ma'am. What would you say to Daksh? Uh, I would say Daksh, work experience is ideal mm. and um, I would say more because uh, you might not want to specialize, you might want to look at uh, different areas that, uh, as we said, there are so many areas of specialization mm. that you can get into. So ideally, once you've finished your BArc degree, mm. work for a couple of years before you go on to a post-graduation. Today, architecture is a long course. It's a five-year program. Mm. So to all intents and purposes, you don't require a post-grad mm. Uh, unless you want to get a qualification right. uh, which you're going to use as a certification to mm. move into a particular line. It's really your work experience that gets which you to whichever counts. field you may yeah. want to work in. Mm. Plus, the course itself, it's a five-year course, but one semester is spent as an internship. Mm. So you are doing an internship, getting, that experience, uh, getting the experience, right. and right. very often students who want to get into a particular line take mm. an internship in the line that they may be interested right. in. And okay. that gives them the kind of uh, exposure that they may be looking for. Right. But, uh, you know, work experience is always, it helps you to, uh, you know, to, right. uh, to get a hang mm. on things that mm. are happening, to give you, uh, you know, the experience that will enable you to look at mm. uh, the way work is done. And, and, and see the it, nuts and bolts, yes, really, absolutely. of whichever and industry you're, help you. Right, industry you're part of. Well, Rohini goes next. Rohini, you have a question? Uh, my name is Rohani and I wanted to ask whether it makes sense to go abroad for internship during the fifth year in my undergrad. I would say that um, to go abroad for uh, internship, firstly, I don't know how easy it is to get a work visa mm. to do an internship abroad. Mm. Uh, and even if that were possible, I don't think there are many employers that will take mm. on interns from India or mm. from a, um, an architectural school in India. Mm. Um, but if you are looking for an internship or some kind of exposure, mm. I would say go and do a postgraduate degree abroad right. and that would give you the kind of uh, Over exposure an that you're looking at. Right. Okay. Internships ideally is best to be done in India. 
Right. India is the place In which is developing right. exactly. more because here is where the jobs are. You, right. Wherever you might study, right. you will eventually be coming back Head here back because this here. is where, right. uh, you know, all the right. jobs are here. This right. is our, uh, our country right. is developing. You can right. see the you way all our it, cities absolutely. are growing right. and the townships are growing. There right. is this huge project of the Jawaharlal Nehru Renewal mm. Urban Mission mm. where they are really looking at developing new townships. So right. many townships mm. are coming up. So we really need the, the architects. The opportunities are here and we need so people like you. You can so. definitely right. find a very, very challenging internship in India in itself. India. Any of you have any clarification that you want uh, Usha to answer? Well, remember, you can just uh, send them away. Well, that's it then. We're slipping a, uh, on, into a quick break right now. We're back with more, including the need to preserve our history and the role that architecture plays. <laughs>